Hello everyone, I hope you're keeping safe and well. I thought I'd do another reading today to celebrate the anniversary of King Richard's coronation on the 6th of July. This time the reading is from The King's Man. All you need to know, of course, is that Duke Richard has become king and his page Matthew Wandsford is no longer in his service but has been apprenticed to a merchant in London called Master Ashley. The day of the coronation was duly declared a holiday by Master Ashley, but though I hastened to the great abbey at Westminster as soon as breakfast was over, I was too late to gain entry. Guards stood with their halberds crossed to keep back the crowds, and only laughed at my attempt to pass on to the expanse of crimson carpet leading from Westminster Hall to the huge door of the abbey's west front. I wish I had a groat for every one of those I've seen today, grumbled one, as I showed my boar badge and tried to explain. I'd be the richest man in London. The church is full to overflowing, said another. Only nobles or churchmen are allowed through now. Take your place out here with the other little people. I bristled at his last words, but I could do no more. So I stayed where I was, hoping no one taller would push in front. But when the proceedings began not long after... I had as good a view as anyone not within the buildings themselves. First to emerge from the hall, to the blast of trumpets and cries of heralds, was a procession of churchmen, clothed in the finest regalia. A tremendous gilt and jewelled crucifix, the size of a man, was carried aloft before them. Next came a line of no noblemen, sumptuously dressed, each bearing a symbol of kingship. Swords, a mace, a scepter, the golden crown itself. Among them were the Earl of Northumberland, and striding just behind, the King's great friend, Lord Lovell, his features solemn. A further fanfare burst forth, and from the shadows of the tall doorway, flanked by several bishops and clad in purple velvet trimmed with ermine, stepped King Richard himself. The crowds around me shouted and applauded and hurrahed as one. But I found I had not the voice to join in, now, only now, at last, I grasped the full truth of what, have, what had happened. The Duke, my Duke, had become King of all England and would today be confirmed such. He walked forward beneath a richly embroidered canopy held high above his head on golden poles. His slow pace, his slow pace allowed all those present the time to behold him. Thunderous cheers crashed against the towering buildings echoing around the square. A few steps behind him, bearing the hem of the train that cascaded from the king's shoulders, paced the Duke of Buckingham, almost outshining his sovereign in a gown of blue stitched with gold cartwheels. Beyond him flowed a stream of other lords, the last carrying another gem-studded crown. The Duchess came next. More than two months since I had bid farewell to her at Middleham, her face above her silver gown was no less pale than it had been then. Her train of cloth of gold was held by an older lady with pinched cheeks and eyes shrewd as a weasel. And then, in the cluster of ladies following, I espied Alice, her reddish curls for once demurely caught up in a netted cap of silver thread dotted with seed pearls. She spotted me, and the serious look upon her face fell away but her joyous wave was shushed away by the more, si more mature ladies around her, and in moments she was swept on past me and into the abbey's cavernous depths. Though I was not within the great church itself, the torrents of music and song that washed forth, and what Master Ashley had told us of the ceremony, meant all unfolded be be before my mind's eye. The swelling song of the choir as the king and queen entered St Edward's shrine, to take their seats of estate. The Latin service intoned before their approach to the high altar, their anointing with the holy oil, the mass celebrated in front of the enormous sword of state, the solemn oath sworn by all the nobles, the king kneeling at the as the archbishop held the crown above his head. I waited with the restless crowd on the cobbles of the abbey precinct, then a fanfare of trumpets blared, a deafening cheer went up within, the bells in the tower pealed, birds, startled from their perches on the roofs and stone still sills of the ancient building, flew up into the glowing blue of the sky, and Duke Richard, I knew, now was king. 
So that's the coronation scene from The King's Man. I hope you've enjoyed these readings. Maybe there'll be another one soon. In the meantime, take care. <laughs>